everybody, quick little video here. This is Karen. Um, we're going to do 2 and a third times 1 and a fourth using the area model. But first, we're going to estimate. So let's look at this. We're, we're doing 2 and a third times 1 and a quarter. So we know that this is 2. All right, sort of looks like 2, right? And this is 1. And any rectangle that's 2 by 1 is really has area two. So we know that two and a third and one and a quarter has to be a little bit bigger than two and then it has to be smaller than the next biggest number for each. So it has to be smaller than a one, two, three by one, two. It has to be smaller than a three by two. So here we just used the whole number part of the mixed numbers, 2 times 1. And for the it has to be smaller than, we're going up one number from 2 to 3 and from 1 to 2. And that would be this lovely rectangle here that has area 6 because it's 3 by 2. So we know the area of 2 and a third times 1 and a quarter has to be in between 2 and 6. Let's get more exact now. We don't just have 2. Well, let's first shade in our, our whole number part. The 2 by 1 that we know we have to be bigger than. There we go. 2 by 1, we have to be bigger than that. Let's go over a third. I like folding paper into thirds better than drawing lines for thirds, but I think I can handle it. Okay, so we need two and a third. So this little piece right here, we're going to have this be our third, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and shade in that third Ooh, all the way down. All right, and then we need this to be one and a quarter. So let's break this into quarters. When I do quarters, I like to do a half and then have each half. And it sort of makes me feel like I'm being more precise and that looks close enough to quarters for all of us right okay so let's go ahead and have this be plus one quarter and this will be our quarter all the way across and then we know that the thing we're actually looking for is the area that is two and a third wide by one and a quarter tall so let's mark off our actual true area model for this product. So a two and a third by one and a quarter marked in by the red. Now we're going to go ahead and find the exact product, which we know is between two and six down here. Let's do that using foil. Okay, so this was two and a third. Instead of writing it as mixed numbers, we're writing it as the product so that we can use foil to get our partial products. One and a quarter. Let's look at each piece. First, we're going to look at the two times one, which gave us this area of two here, which we already wrote up here. So we can write that down here for the F part of our foil, first, outer, inner, last. And then we're going to do the outer, which is 2 times a quarter, which is blue in this picture. 2 times a quarter, which was right here. And a lot of people need this line right here because this shows us 1 times a quarter and another 1 times a quarter, or 2 times a quarter. 1 quarter, 2 quarter. This whole thing here, we can write that this is one quarter and this is one quarter, or I like it better to just say that this entire thing is two quarters, which is a half. So that blue area is a half. Okay, that's the outer plus inner right here. The inner is one third times one, which is this piece right here that we see, right here. It's one third wide and just one 
tall. So this is our one third. One third. And last, to be oh so cliche, we're going to go ahead and do our last piece. Our last piece is easiest to look at as part of this one by one unit here. Because then we see that it's the pink one third of the blue one quarter or the blue one quarter of the pink one third, which sounds the same and it is, but it's the commutative property. So we're talking about this double shaded pink and blue, which usually makes purple. So one third of one quarter is the same as one quarter of one third. All together in this one by one unit square, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces because it's a three by four with all these divisions in it. So this is just one twelfth there. So this we have is all of our partial products. The two for the two whole numbers multiplied, the one third for the one third times one, the two fourths or one half for the one fourth times two, and then the one fourth for the two fractional pieces multiplied together, not one fourth, one twelfth. I think you knew what I meant. There's the one twelfth. But next we need to go ahead and add up all these things to get the final actual product. Let's do that. In order to do that, we're going to need common denominators. Our least common denominator is pretty plain to see here. We've got a 2, a 3, and a 12. So we're going to need everything to be twelfths. So the 1 half, we're going to multiply by 6 sixths. That's kind of a messy 6 sixths, but you guys can handle. You're used to my messy handwriting. So here we've got 6 twelfths. The 1 third, we're going to need to multiply that by 4 fourths to get the common denominator and this gives us four twelfths and then our one twelfth was already ready to go. Don't know where that came from. Okay so we've got two holes, six twelfths, four twelfths, and one twelfth. So six and four is ten, one more is eleven. So this gives us all together two and then eleven twelfths which is written as an improper number, 2 and 11 twelfths. And that is our actual product for 2 and a third times 1 and a quarter. So it's the area of this red thing right here. 2 and a third times 1 and a quarter gives us this. It's definitely greater than 2, our green area, and smaller than 6, our bigger area on the outside. There we go, that's our final product. It's really far away from the original question, so we probably want to go ahead and write it in here too. I hope this helps you see all the connections between the estimating of the smaller thing, the bigger one when you make each number the next whole number, and just kind of where that number should basically be and what it is exactly. So there you go. Next we'll do some decimals. Thanks for watching.